Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. This was really easy because the data are so compelling, so it's a problem. Here are my disclosures. Okay, so uh, I think you've probably seen this slide. You know, I've heard 100 people say that the aortic stenosis patients are coming out of the woodwork now that we have TAVR, but if you look at the data, there are actually more patients who have mitral valve disease than aortic valve disease, and in both states, the prevalence of valve disease increases with increasing age, which is not surprising to us. When you look at mitral regurgitation specifically, all those patients who have mitral valve disease, they have mitral regurgitation. Mitral stenosis is, you know, very uh, uncommon still, you know, very low level, but it's all mitral regurgitation. That's what's driving that former slide. And you all know this, but I'll just go over it. Mitral regurgitation leads to heart failure. Uh, MR increases uh, load and stress on the ventricle, leads to myocardial injury, leads to LV dysfunction, leads to LV dilatation, which leads to further mitral regurgitation. It's a vicious cycle. And we don't do a great job of managing it because if you look at patients hospitalized for heart failure, if they have concomitant moderate or severe mitral regurgitation, their risk of rehospitalization for heart failure is nearly double. Mitral regurgitation impacts survival. So if you look at this cur these curves uh, in gray here, this is survival for patients who have no MR. If you have mild MR, you have slightly lower survival, and you have moderate to severe MR, you have significantly lower survival over five years. And we spend more on mitral valve disease than we do aortic valve disease as well. So we have here uh, on the left asymptomatic aortic valve disease, which is $4.5 billion annually. Symptomatic aortic valve disease is nearly $6 billion annually. And then you have the mitral valve disease, uh, which we spend even more on in the United States, up to $8 billion for patients with symptomatic mitral valve disease, and we know this is all MR based on the prior slides. But luckily, we have medical management, right? So we have beta blockers, we have losartan, we have enalapril, we have ACE inhibitors, we have afterload reduction, right? So we have all of these things. All of these trials were negative. So if you look at the guidelines for medical management of mitral regurgitation, this is the guidelines. These are the guidelines in their entirety. Two recommendations. Medical therapy for systolic dysfunction is reasonable. That's only a class 2A. Vasodilator therapy is not indicated. Class 3, no benefit. That is it. Those are our guidelines for the medical management of mitral regurgitation. And here's how, pe here's how people do with medical management of MR. Over the course of five years, 50% mortality, 90% risk of rehospitalization for CHF. So we don't have good options. But we do have surgery. So surgery improves survival. Uh, on the left, um, we have uh, the overall population where medical management is here and uh, surgery is here. Surgery has improved survival. On the right, we have a, a matched cohort where, again, surgery has a better survival than medical management. Surgery also improves symptoms. Again, in the overall population, here's the incidence of CHF symptoms in the medically managed patients, and here's the CHF incidence in patients who undergo surgery. Uh, even in the matched cohort, surgery is clearly better. So surgery helps patients. Um, but despite that, MR is undertreated. So depending on how you slice the numbers, we have uh, this many patients with MR in the United States. We have uh, um, uh, 1.6 million who are eligible for uh, treatment, and yet only uh, 30,000 patients per year undergo mitral surgery. That's 2% uh, of eligible patients. So why don't patients undergo surgery? Well, half of them are high risk. Uh, which makes sense. These are elderly patients with comorbidities. Um, but half of the patients are not technically high risk, at least uh, based on the data that we have, uh, yet they still don't undergo surgery very often. We know why surgery is underutilized. We could show these same slides for aortic valve disease. As patients get older, they are very unlikely to have surgical uh, mitral valve repair or replacement. Only 15% of patients over the age of 80 
Uh, as patients' ejection fractions go down, they are unlikely to have surgery. Uh, EF less than 30, only 14% of patients undergo surgery. And uh, as their comorbidities go up, they're less and less likely to have surgery. So we know all of this. So we go back to the fact that we're spending all this money on mitral valve disease. Uh, We don't have good medical options. Uh, We have surgical options, but many patients are not candidates for surgery. We know that mitral valve regurgitation is going to increase with age and that it's more prevalent than even aortic valve disease. And so let's talk about what is happening to the elder population in the United States. So um, I'm not, hopefully these show up. Uh, We uh, we had in the year uh, 2000 uh, 35 million uh, patients in the U.S. above the age of 35. Um, In in, uh, 2030, uh, that is projected to be 73 million patients, and then uh, almost, 100 million, uh, almost 100 million patients by 2050. And if we look at the world elder population, we see the same uh, 400 uh, million in the year 2000. That increases to almost um, 1 billion in uh, the year 2030, and then 1.5 billion by the year 2050. So the world elder population is uh, going to be exploding. They're going to have mitral regurgitation, and uh, we, you know, as yet, uh, are not adequately managing this. So the conclusions are that the prevalence of MR increases with age and is more common than aortic stenosis. Moderate to severe MR increases mortality and CHF hospitalization. MR is associated with high health care expenditures. Medical thera- therapy options are limited. Only a minority of patients with moderate to severe MR undergo surgery in the United States, and the U.S. and global elder populations are expected to more than double by the year 2050. So what are our options? Uh, this guy says, your medical problems are more complicated than I thought. I'm going to refer you to another doctor who has more medical insurance than I have. So bottom line is that we need viable alternatives to surgery uh, to better manage mitral regurgitation in our aging population. Thank you.